Did you just give me 40 years? Sir? Yes. You just gave me 40 years. <coughs> Listening to the judge sentence you to a lifetime of imprisonment plagued with desolation and anxiety is surely not on anyone's must-do list. However, some experience just that as a result of their rotten actions, and their reactions show us just how fragile humans can be regardless of how evil. Number 5. Diana Lovejoy A woman who was convicted in a slave-for-hire plot against her ex-husband fainted in court just moments after her guilty verdict was read out. Diana Lovejoy, 45, was found guilty of conspiracy to commit slaying and attempted slaying over a September 2016 attack on her estranged husband, Greg Mulville, in Carlsbad, California. Footage taken from inside the courtroom showed Lovejoy looking wide-eyed at her legal team as the verdict was read out before she collapsed in her chair just seconds later. A member of her legal team immediately reached out and grabbed her elbow as an officer tried to help Lovejoy sit upright. The officer helped her lie down on the floor as a fellow officer radioed for medical assistance. Judge Sim Von Kalinowski cleared the courtroom while Lovejoy received medical attention. Paramedics wheeled Lovejoy out of the courthouse and took her to hospital for treatment. The ordeal briefly delayed the verdict reading for Lovejoy's co-defendant, 50-year-old gun instructor Weldon McDavid Jr. He was also found guilty of attempted slaying and attack with a fatal weapon. Lovejoy and Mulville had separated in July 2014 and were in the middle of a messy custody battle over their young son at the time of the attempted slaying. The legal fight was coming to an end after shared custody had been agreed upon. Lovejoy had also agreed to pay Mulville $120,000, which would have been due in the weeks after he was shot. Mulville was injured on the night of September 1, when he received a phone call from someone claiming to be a private investigator with information on Lovejoy. The victim was instructed to drive to a deserted road where he would find a package regarding his ex-wife. Mulville, who took a colleague with him, was shot by McDavid under his left armpit. McDavid, a former Marine, later testified that he was a trained marksman and that if he had actually intended to slay the victim, he would have done so. The gunman had met Lovejoy when she started taking shooting lessons at the range where he worked. Lovejoy faces 25 years to life, and McDavid faces 50 years to life in prison. Within the meaning of Penal Code Section 12022, verdict. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, find the defendant guilty of the crime of an attempted murder. We further find true the allegation that within the meaning of Penal Code Section 12022, paren A, paren 1, guilty of the crime of conspiracy to commit murder. Number 4. Blake Jefferson A 22-year-old man sobbed in court as he was accused of kniving his mother to her end in a drug-fueled rampage at their home. Police believe Blake Jefferson attacked his mother, 48-year-old mother, Deidre, while she spoke on the phone to his grandmother at their house in Houston, Texas. He is accused of kniving her repeatedly, then leaving her body in their garage while he hid in a neighbor's closet until police arrived. Harris County Sheriff's Office say the man had been taking drugs and was suffering mental health issues at the time of the alleged attack. The University of Texas graduate had visited a pastor earlier in the day to tell him he was having spiritual visions. Shortly before 2 a.m. on Friday morning, Miss Jefferson, a beloved local teacher, phoned her mother to tell her she was concerned about her son's behavior. Harris County Sheriff's Office said in a statement. During the phone call, Deidre started screaming that Blake was stabbing her and the phone disconnected. Deputies arrived on the scene and discovered Deidre knived lifeless in the garage. Blake broke into a neighbor's home to hide in the closet immediately afterwards. The neighbor phoned police around 10 minutes after his grandmother's report to say he was hiding in their home. He was taken to hospital to be treated for a suspected drug overdose. So this was a young man that uh, something in his own mind went wrong. He had a normal life, very, uh, like I said, an intelligent young man.
number three, Ryan Stone. A Colorado man convicted of carjacking three vehicles, including one with a four-year-old boy inside, was sentenced to 160 years in prison for the high-speed chase that was seen on live TV. Ryan Stone, 30, was found guilty in April of 11 felonies including attempted manslaughter and first-degree attack for injuries sustained by a police officer who tried to stop him. Stone told Douglas County District Court Judge Paul King he was remorseful for the March 2014 crime spree that spanned five counties, covered 75 miles, and was broadcast live by a Denver News Station's helicopter. The pursuit began in the town of Longmont, about 30 miles north of Denver, where Stone, who was wanted for failing to appear in court on drug charges, stole a sport utility vehicle outside a convenience store. A four-year-old boy was in the SUV when Stone sped away, heading south on Interstate 25 toward Denver and leading police on a chase at speeds of over 100 miles per hour. In the town of Brighton, Stone crashed the SUV into a minivan and abandoned the vehicle with the uninjured pajama-clad boy inside the TV footage showed. He was then seen yanking a woman driver from her car, stealing it and speeding away. Stone crashed that vehicle near Denver International Airport, where he carjacked another vehicle and again fled. Colorado State Patrol Trooper Bellaman He was struck when he attempted to deploy stop sticks south of Denver in an effort to deflate the stolen vehicle's tires. Stone ultimately crashed the third vehicle and was arrested after a brief foot chase. In phone calls made from jail by Stone and released by prosecutors, the suspect blamed he for the injuries the state trooper sustained, which included a shattered leg. The dumbass is standing in the middle of the highway, Stone told his mother in one call. In another call, Stone boasted to a female friend about the international news coverage his case garnered. My lawyer told me I made the news in the UK and Australia, Stone said laughing. Stone will not be eligible for parole until 2085. Number 2. Jaleel Hoskins A self-confessed slayer lashed out in the courtroom after he was handed a 50-100 to year prison sentence for slaying his girlfriend, a mother of five, and dumping her body in the garbage. Before learning his fate, Jaleel Hoskins of Grand Rapids, Michigan, offered a weeping apology to the family of Latrice Mays, whom he slayed, insisting he loved the woman and didn't mean to take her life. But when Kent County Circuit Court Judge James Redford sentenced him up to a century behind bars, the handcuffed man snapped, throwing the podium toward the bench and lunging forward before security dragged him from the courtroom. But before he even left the premises, Hoskins' family began screaming at the family of the victim, including her mother and father. The two families surging towards each other, yelling and additional court deputies had to tear them apart. Hoskins' devastated mother, who made an emotional statement to the court earlier, yelled at Hoskins' cousin to shut up as Redford banged his gavel and demanded order. In almost as dramatic a move, the 26-year-old halted his trial on December 11, the third day, by pleading guilty to second degree in the middle of the testimony. But Assistant Kent County Prosecutor Kelly Conkey urged the judge not to give the slayer a lesser sentence because he confessed. Rather, she asked Redford to sentence him to what would result in a lifetime in prison. This is where her body ended up and will stay forever, mixed with the rest of the trash. Mays went missing on March 19. Less than two months later, Grand Rapids police said they believed her body had been incinerated and dumped in a landfill after Hoskins put it in a dumpster. Conkey argued that Hoskins' motive in the sling was that he wanted to stop her talking to police after he allegedly attacked the father of two of her children. She said the violent strangulation was premeditated. Redford also admonished Hoskins for dumping the body, robbing the family of a chance to have a proper funeral for their loved one. Mays' mother, Wanda Rose, spoke before Hoskins was sentenced and recalled the difficult task of trying to explain to her grandchildren about their mother's passing. Although Hoskins continued to claim in his piece that he loved Mays and worked hard to support her and her daughter. First of all, I want you to stand there and look at me and quit standing there looking at the ceiling like a little coward. You now I'm going to face you and I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. You tell me how I explain what, what happened to their mom. <coughs> Number 1. Ricky Hand An Ohio man who has just been sentenced to 40 years for armed robbery stunned a courtroom by throwing feces at his lawyer. This man had previously served prison time. He pleaded guilty in a robbery case in October 2011 and was sentenced to four years in prison for the crime, but here he was at it again. Ricky Hand, 46, who was on trial this time for a series of robberies across Springfield, whipped out bottles filled with his own excrement and urine 
which he had hidden in his arm sling. Just before the outburst, Han had interrupted the judge, saying, Did you just give me 40 years, sir? You just gave me 40 years? Well, guess what? Did you just give me 40 years, sir? Yes. You just gave me 40 years. Well, guess what? Video footage captured the moment he hurled the waste, hitting his defense lawyer in the process, after which Hand was immediately restrained by deputies. Later on, he admitted to hiding several bottles of his own urine and feces on his body. Hand faced 30 charges of breaking and entering, safe cracking, aggravated robbery, abduction, and attempted safe cracking. He pleaded guilty to seven of the original charges in a Clark County Common Pleas courtroom. As a result of his courtroom antics, Hand now faced an extra five counts of harassment with bodily substance, one for his attorney and four deputies, obstructing official business and retaliation. The sergeant in charge of court deputies said that patting down defendants appearing in court was not part of protocol since they are transferred there directly from their jail cells. However, in light of what happened, the sergeant said policy could change. Our policy dictates that there's a search prior to and a search after he leaves, and that was very apparently not done. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.